we have talked about PCA, which is a deterministic linear model. In this unit, we're going to be talking about general autoencoders, which are deterministic nonlinear models, deterministic nonlinear latent variable models. Here is the picture. It's actually quite simple. It's very similar to the picture that we've seen before, except that the encoder function and the decoder function are now not assumed to be linear, but are represented by some neural network parameterized through the parameters w. So this can be a convolutional neural network or a multi-layer perceptron with several layers or a residual network or another type of network such as a graph neural network. So in a general autoencoder, we have a neural network. Um, and if you consider this entire block here as a neural network, we have a neural network whose outputs are its own inputs. And there's a bottleneck in the middle that tries to compress information. But now in contrast to PCA in a nonlinear fashion. But again, as in PCA, the goal is to minimize the reconstruction error and the most common reconstruction error is the L2 loss that we could minimize. Now there is a relationship between autoencoders and PCA. In particular, um, PCA is a special case of autoencoders as you might have already guessed. So if we assume F, the mapping from X to C the encoder and G, the mapping from C to X hat to both be linear without any activation function. So in other words, we have C equals, let's say A X plus A and X hat, the decoder result is B C plus B. Then in this case, the entire mapping here becomes linear. I plug in, um, uh, C into this expression here. So I get B A X plus A plus B. So we can replace this with another matrix C. So we have a linear mapping C X plus C. And we know already that for this mapping, the optimal solution W star is given by PCA if we minimize the L2 reconstruction error. So both are equivalent if we assume the encoder and the decoder to be linear layers without activation functions. Okay, that's basically all. <laughs> um, let's look at some results. Some results where we have a um, autoencoder. It's actually not a variational autoencoder, that's wrong. It's autoencoder, should be autoencoder. So we have a, a, a number of different variants of autoencoders. Um, and we compare that to PCA. The first um, model is a simple PCA model, um, where we go from a two-dimensional space in our illustrations to a one-dimensional space. Then we have an autoencoder model, um, where we have just a uh, linear layer um, that does the same thing. So we should obtain the same result. We have a version where we also go to one dimensional space, but in a nonlinear way, where we go from the two dimensional space first to a 32 dimensional space, and then we map to the one dimensional space. And then we map, we have another hidden layer that so is again, a hidden layer in this MLP decoder, where we go from this one dimensional latent space to the 32 dimensional um, decoder hidden space. And then we map to the reconstruction. And then we have the same model where now the latent dimension is changed from 1D to 2D and we observe what will happen. I've actually implemented these um, three types of models using the educational framework. And this is the visualization um, that I have obtained. What you can see here are the results of an autoencoder on a 2D toy data set in blue. This is a, a cosine from zero to pi and uh, we observe the data set in blue and the reconstructions as the yellow points, as well as the reconstruction errors indicated by this yellow 
lines that connect the blue and the corresponding orange point. So what I did is I encoded the blue points and then I decoded them and this gives me the reconstruction and I draw a line between the two. And what we have here is an autoencoder with only one linear layer for both the encoder and decoder and a latent dimensionality of one. And I trained an autoencoder with a learning rate of 0 0.05 and this is the first iteration. So we don't have anything useful in the first iteration. It's a random initialized model. So we get a random projection. But then after 10 iterations already, we can see that the model converges to something that's better, that has a lower reconstruction error than the initialization. This is after 50 iterations. And then this is after 1000 iterations. And if we compare this to the result of principal component analysis with a one dimensional latent space Q, then we see that the results are indistinguishable. So we have an empirical proof now also that PCA and an autoencoder with a linear encoder and decoder layer are equivalent. Now, still, this is not a very good reconstruction. You can see the reconstruction errors are large. The manifold, there is a manifold. There's a manifold in this 2D space, but it's not a linear manifold. It's a curved manifold that we want to discover. So what I did next is um, I implemented that autoencoder that I've showed you on the previous slide here, this autoencoder that has a nonlinear encoder and a nonlinear decoder with a 32 dimensional hidden state for both. And this is what, uh, what is the outcome? Of course, there is, we need more iterations to train this model because there's more parameters and there's more layers. So backpropagation needs longer time. And this is the initialization. So the initialization is still uh, um, uh, random. But we can also see that after 10 iterations, we reduce the reconstruction error, but still it looks the reconstruction is, is close to a line or the, yeah, the reconstructed points are close to a line. But we can see now already at 50 iterations that this line breaks up into uh, kind of multiple line segments that try to approximate the shape of the manifold in a better way. If we have 300 iterations, we can already see that the reconstruction error is largely minimized. Of course, we can't minimize it to zero because I added some noise to these points on a manifold. They are not precisely on the manifold. They are, there is some noise. So the reconstruction error with a one dimensional latent space will never go to zero, but it will become very small. And this is after 10,000 iterations where you can now see that the, the approximate shape of this manifold has been captured by the nonlinear autoencoder. And then out of curiosity, what happens if we use the same model, but with a two dimensional latent space, this is after the first iteration, this is 10 iterations, this is 50 iterations, this is 300 iterations, 10,000 iterations, you can see that the autoencoder is capable of reconstructing the data set precisely. This is what we would expect because with two dimensions, we can't actually gain anything we don't um, uh, we, we, we do not need to compress so we can basically even have a linear mapping for this needs to be discovered by the autoencoder still it's not um, you know it's not in this case it's not a closed form solution but it's an iterative algorithm that comes up with the solution we can do the same thing for MNIST here are some results of reconstructions on MNIST um, in the first row is the real data. The second row is the data from a deep autoencoder. The third is a logistic PCA model and the fourth is PCA. And you can see that this nonlinear autoencoder leads to more sharp, more crisp reconstructions compared to PCA using the same latent dimensionality. And in contrast, PCA always learns the best linear embedding but the linear embedding is not enough to capture that data set well. And uh, finally, one thing I wanted to show you is a denoising, so-called denoising autoencoder. A denoising autoencoder is an autoencoder that takes noisy inputs and predicts, tries to predict the original noise-free data. So we're giving a noise-free data set like MNIST, 
and we're adding some noise to it. We're adding some Gaussian noise to it. And the idea of a, such a denoising autoencoder, and here this is the result, you can see that this digits are denoised quite well. The idea is that by adding this noise, we get more stable, more higher level representations that are robust to these input corruptions. And that this encourages the model to generalize better and capture more useful structure and statistics in the data and doesn't overfit as, as uh, much as a regular autoencoder. And the idea is very similar to data augmentation. Right? It's, it's basically just doing data augmentation to the input, except that now, we don't have a supervised learning problem, but the label is the noise-free input itself.